Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. As you'll remember, very recently we were working on taking apart my collet chuck so that we can convert it to hold 5C collets. We spent forever taking it apart and it turned out that it was just a really nice snug fit here. And so these were the only three screws that were actually involved in holding it down. And this is the piece that we need to modify. As you can tell from a quick cursory glance here, that's a rather coarse thread. And this, the 5C collet thread itself, is much different. In addition, this is a left-hand thread. 5C collet is not. Now what that does mean is when we do this conversion to tighten up our collet chuck, because of these differences in threads, that being a much coarser thread than this, and we're actually going to have to tighten this by turning leftwards instead of rightways, anti-clockwise instead of clockwise, because the 5C collet has a clockwise thread, right-hand thread. This one has a left-hand thread. That's fine. We're still going to get it to work. Because as you remember in yesterday's episode, when we put that in there, look at how perfectly that fits. It is the same body diameter here, and it is the exact same taper in this uh, number five true grit collet chuck. So indeed, this here is all we have to change. And I don't even really mean change. We're going to make a brand spanking new one. So we're going to need some steel, and we're going to take some measurements. This is going to be a really fun project here in the Colchester Lane. Let's have a look, see. 68.54, few thou under 2.7 inches. Just got to find some steel that's bigger than that. Well, this stuff is below two and a quarter, so this is going to be way too small. That's 55 mil round, 55 mil round, 55 mil round. All this stuff is too small. It could upset some material, but what I'm hoping is I have a little off cut somewhere of some... Hmm. Hmm. Have I used it? I think this might... Yeah, that's overkill. That's way too big. Um, so, of course, this is where we measured the piece, and I've been looking around for 10 minutes for this bit of steel. I feel pretty stupid. Right, so I'm going to clean this up, and I'm going to quickly make some measurements and sketch them out on this piece of paper so I know what it is got to make. Have a think about my order of operations. So I've taken a bunch of measurements off of this thing. Now what I need to do is I need to have a look at the thread that it is that I need to make. I've got a set of thread gauges here. 55 degree Whitworth or 60 degree Metrisch. Now, I've got a little bit of a hanker and I've got an idea here that we're going to be somewhere over here or over there. And so basically, I've got to find us one of these bad boys that's going to fit it best. And would you look at that? That looks pretty close to me. Certainly wouldn't say that's perfect, but I think that'll be good enough for it to work. We'll see if it doesn't. Learning experience, you know? So that would be a 1.25 millimeter pitch. We can then measure the OD. A little Don Bailey trick there for the old uh, for the old mic. And we'll go ahead and give her a gentle mic here, just to get our OD of the thread. That's 29.447, 5C call it thread on Google. We'll find out a little more about the thread here, so that we can work out to what size we bore that hole before it is that we run our internal threading tool inside it to actually make the thread. Smart idea I just had, and even an opportunity for a last ditch scenario if a Attempt number one doesn't work of threading it ourselves. I can always take this, which is from one of my collet blocks, and we can weld that to a flange and then turn it all again, because this definitely has the right threads. And this means we can take ourselves an inside reading here, not with the calipers, it's not very accurate, and we can basically copy this. And since we have the OD of this, with the ID of this, and our pitch, we should be good to go. Time to scratch up my telescope gauges. Okay, thank you, ABOM79, for the tutorial. That's 28.771. Rokely, dokely, rokely, pokely, tokely, dokely, rokely. We have some drawings here. We have a lot of wrong measurements. You know, I said I got these good quality micrometers. I'm not so sure that is a good quality micrometer because for some reason my uh, my my zero or my like one inch, you know, my 25 mil on it changed. So I had a look at the measurements. I'm like, hell, that doesn't seem right. So I had to re-zero the caliper properly. And uh, thank goodness I did because now I have the correct measurements. I've also found out that the thread for a 5C collet indeed is a 20 tooth per inch thread. Now a 20 tooth per inch thread, now I got pretty close to matching that up with my thread gauge. Thought it was close at 1.25 millimeters pitch. In fact, 20 threads uh, per inch is exactly 1.27 millimeters. So I don't know exactly how well that'll work together. Best thing I can say is I might as well try it. So here's a piece of steel. I actually lost this a second time just a few minutes ago. Spent another 10 minutes looking for it. It was sat here on the lathe with that, uh, that coolant cup on top of it. After 10 minutes of searching, I found it. Well, Jamie found it. And so I say we're about ready to go into the lathe and uh, and start manufacturing this thing, start making this thing here. Put that thing in there. Now, I'm a little worried. Yeah, I'm going to need to deburr the ends. 
There we go, a little clean up there. Try to help us out. Just want to make sure I'm not wiggling around too crazily here, and I am. Trouble is though, since this is a three drawer, it's going to be difficult to get that uh, too accurate back here, but I don't want it really oscillating too much, so we should be all right now. All right, so here we go. That looks pretty scary. Okie dokie. I believe we should be getting pretty close to dimension there. Just check the diameter of the piece that we're working to, which is 68.503. <laughs> and here we have 68.548. So conveniently, I made that last cut and the spring cut here at zero on the dial. So this wheel is divided in 100, and 100 is 10 millimeters off the diameter. That means that 10 is one millimeter off the diameter, and two is 0 0.2 millimeters off the diameter. Between 0 and 2, we have, it's divided up pretty weirdly, so we have 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.12, 0 0.16, and then 0 0.2. And so because we need 0 0.045 off the diameter, for you inchophiles, that is about two thousandths of an inch. I will move in a little less than one styration on the dial. And we're gonna take one light, light cut here, obviously. We're then gonna measure it. I'm not gonna move the dials, and the chances are, if it's too proud, I'll probably only just take a spring cut so I won't even touch the dials. <laughs> Finish it off on the hand wheel. Generally come in here with Mike. We can read 65, so we're gonna count 66, 67, 68. We can see the half mark, so 68.50. Oh, and because we are above the zero, we'll then look across to our thousandths of a millimeter. We'll see which one, which of the lines lines up, and I need to see it in my eyes. And would you look at that? I would say we are bang on three. And now just gonna double check that that is right the perfect fit for this piece. If we got the same kind of feel on the mic as well. Would you look at that? I'd call that, <laughs> that's pretty damn close. This was measured to 6503, and I just took the mic off the lay that's 6503, and now I'm reading 6502, which is, I mean, I'm new to using micrometers, so obviously. I'm calling that good. Close enough, by any stretch of the imagination. Next step, now we've turned the outside diameter, is we need to turn this diameter here. I'm gonna throw some dicom on this so I have some pretty color to look at while I work for the rest of the day. Give it a light scratch with the calipers. I also have a DRO here so I can bring this across. And not only can I do something like this, but I've got a stop here for the carriage, which if I give that a clean, I can move across, tighten her up, tighten her up, and hopefully that won't move. And so now, simply a case of turning this down to 41, 0.355 millimeters. Here we go. Okay, hopefully I'm about 1.3 millimeters away. This is the trouble with digital micrometers. They're a little fatter. Let's see if we can get this bad boy in that. Okay, what do we have here? 42.66. Seven. So we are 1.352 millimeters away. I should add that when I switched micrometers, I did take a separate reading on this over here. So I did that last cut and a skim cut at 90. So now I want to move, let's say, one millimeter. So we're going to go all the way to zero. Isn't that convenient? It's almost like I planned pretty well. Don't worry, I am as shocked as you are. I'm going to take a quick cut. I'm going to take a skim cut here. We'll get in there with the mic again. I'm not mistaken, that is 41.6. 
0.82. So the difference between that and our final dimension is 0.367. For you imperialists, that's about 14 thou. So we need to move 0.367 to get to our final dimension. I want to move 0.3 millimeters. Leave us just a little bit of smidge. That is 0.2 millimeters. This is 0.3 millimeters. Whoever designed these graduations was really interesting. You have to go in between a line to get to a solid number. Right, let's take a cut. <laughs> let's give it the old Scottish measure. 41.405. That is a difference of 0.0. .0 9 millimeters. We need to move 0.09 millimeters. I'm going to move this 0.08 millimeters. That's 0.04. This. Damn it. Backlash. <gasps> no! Damn it. Forgot the number. Okay, I look back at the footage. I'd, I'd forgotten the number. It was actually conveniently three. But to move it 0.8 millimeters, we will go two graduations, which leaves us half a graduation shy of four. The wind will blow and make that right. We'll take a cut. We'll give her a measure. 41.1776. Well, I really missed the mark there. I'm uh, gonna have to have a think about what happened. This is the reading off our lathe, as you can see. Doesn't fit onto our part. We are this much of a millimeter past where we needed to be. Wah, wah. In inches, we are five and a half thou off. Since we got our ball like bang on, I'm not majorly worried about it. And I think there should be enough gunk in there to make up for it, eh? Yeah. I think the lesson there is when you've got less than a tenth of a millimeter, probably best to just take another spring pass, eh? Love to hear what you guys think. Best way to, uh, to get that close. I know a lathe isn't obviously the most accurate thing in the world. And, you know, expecting crazy, crazy tolerances is like expecting pigs to fly. But it would have been nice to get that within a thou. I should probably go easy on mixing up the old, uh, the old units of measurement. Before I get this, uh, get this out of there, I do need to just clean up that face right at our scribe, or right at our DRO, or right at our stop. Just gonna quickly give it a little chamfer. We rushed through the previous step, which was drilling the holes. It was a little bit boring though. So now, here we are for another explanation at the fun step. This is boring a hole. We have a boring bar set in with a carbide insert here. We have a 22 millimeter hole and we need to open it up a good ways. At least to 30.498 millimeters or thereabouts. There are much better ways of making threads than simply taking the inside diameter of, uh, of uh, like a nut, pretty much what I did here. I took the inside diameter of this 5C, uh, 5C nut here. But this is, this is what we're doing and hopefully it works. All right, well, let's do some boring. <laughs> gonna do a final skin cut there. And we're gonna use a little telescoping gauges here. Thank you, ABOM79, Adam, for the tutorial on YouTube. He's got a great video on how to use these. Have I absorbed it well? I don't know. We will find out. Now in with the mic. My DRO is reading 29.15. And this is reading 29.53. And since I'm a beginner at this, I'm gonna take that measurement all over again. 29.514. See, that's a big difference. Let's try it, third time lucky. 29.512. And I'm gonna do it a fourth time. 29.533. So I'll round that 29.520. It's the middle of them both. I've had uh, had a mesh. <laughs> had two measurements at 29.533 and two measurements at 29.512 and four respectively. I got some learning to do. Anyway, that's a difference of 0 0.993 millimeters. So I'm gonna move in, say, 0 0.7 millimeters. Turn her on, take a cut. And now back to the telescoping gauges debacle. 30.165. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a skim cut, see what that does. And the telescope saga continues. 30.280. You know, something I just realized here, 
This whole project might end up being a bust. I was counting on the similarity between 20 threads per inch here and the 1.25 millimeter pitch that I can achieve on this lathe. This is a metric lathe. Just dawned on me, 20 threads per inch, obviously, as I said earlier, 1.27 millimeters pitch. That's 0.02 millimeter difference there. Over 10 threads is all of a sudden 0.2 millimeters difference. Over the 15 threads that we have here, all of a sudden that's a pretty sizable difference there. I think that's a third of a millimeter in difference. So this may not work. Do you want a good practice though? There we go, that's the money. That's pretty damn close. I'm happy with that. So this is a boring bar, and this is a threading tool. Internal threading tool to be specific. Alright, so where is our material here? Okay, I'm gonna set a zero. I'm gonna give the uh, surfaces of my stop a wipe. Slide that across. Give that a tighten. Don't want to crash the lathe. <sighs> Let's see if it works. Yep. So what I'm gonna do now real fast is I'm gonna go back 18.5 millimeters because we actually only need 17 millimeters threaded. It's gonna get cut off. I'm gonna go back 18.5 millimeters with this tool. That accounts for where that point is also. And I'm gonna go down to the thread depth I'm just gonna like chase across it, give myself a landing zone, uh, because when I'm threading this, I don't wanna crash into the end, don't wanna crash into the stop. You know, all sorts of bad things can happen, so I, I want enough time to turn it off before I reach the end of the hole. That's gonna help us. So there we go. Hopefully that uh, gives us a little bit of clearance as we finish our threading passes. So, it is now time to thread. Now, traditionally, folks will set up their threading here, down here, with this this stuff there. But, fortunately, this machine came with an ingest threading attachment. Now, what this means is you don't have to lock into the lead screw and stay in the lead screw the whole time you're threading or line up a number on a dial every time you re-engage the lead screw. Typically this means that you have to run a thread, you stop the lathe, you put it in reverse, you run it back using the lead screw. Here, instead, I can select whatever thread I want up top here on the plate. I'll put general pressure here and then eventually it opens up and it allows me to go and look at that, we have a stop set up underneath it. It lifts up the handle, it stops the carriage. I can go back it doesn't matter wherever I am, it will only let me engage where it wants to be engaged. It'll engage, supposedly, 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 the right point on the lead screw every time, giving us the right threat. Of course, I still got my hard stop here, so hopefully we really don't do too much damage. If I keep my hand on that, you know, I hopefully won't break my lathe. Breaking the lathe will be a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zero out the tool, so it should just take the lightest of cuts. I'm going to test this whole setup and see if it works. So. Uh, Without further ado, whoop, that's way too fast. Holy moly. Without further ado, that's still too fast. There we go, nice and slow. Let's see if she works. Back her off, come back out. So now if I bend my eyes around and I get them inside of this thing, we can check the pitch. Something doesn't seem right. Well, this calls for more blue dicum. Right, the dicum's dried, let's try it again. And now for the second time today, I'm gonna bend some light. Get my eyeballs inside this thing. Hello, bingo, we're on. Let's do it. So sad right now. So sad. I didn't, I wasn't audio recording for that. I have just started threading this in. I made something that accepts it. No, this is the first time I've ever done this. <gasps> this is so freaking cool. No. Oh, well, I've now got it stuck there, so that's not very smart. But like, it went halfway. This is unbelievably exciting. No way. Right, I'm gonna take a little spring cut here with this tool. Are you kidding me? That is so awesome. Right, I'm gonna loosen them up just a smidge. One more little spring cut. So I just took that tool and deburred the corner there so we have a good thread start. What I've also done is I've got my dial, put it back to where we were when we were doing our scratch passes. And I'm just gonna take a little skim cut over the burrs on the top of the thread. So it's just touching ever so slightly there and uh, hopefully that'll clean that up. Little tip I learned from Joe Pizinski on YouTube. He has an unbelievably educational YouTube channel on machining. I've learned so much from this stuff. He actually recommends threading with the lathe in reverse with a tool that's out that way and it makes total sense because what you can do, especially if you're on the lead screw and you don't have a stop like that, 
what you can do is you can have your lathe running backwards. And then look at this. You know, you engage your lead screw, carriage goes away. When you're threading internally like this, it means that you don't actually run the risk of running into the back of that. Joe Pizinski, great YouTube channel. Anyway though, look at that. I am ecstatic, I'm beyond thrilled. Uh, this thing only threads in this far in the collet truck anyway. So I'm just, I'm overjoyed, over the moon, feel over, ah, this is so good. I'm just gonna clean up these threads with some scotch Bright and the lathe running backwards. That way my finger is being pushed out of the hole. Another tip from Joe Pizinski. Right, now I have a carbide tool here. We're gonna part this sucker off right there. 